Joining me now from Capitol Hill is the governor of Puerto Rico, Ricardo Rossello. Governor, thank you very much for joining us. Um, you're you. talking about mobilizing Latino voters because you say this tax bill is going to hurt uh, the island of Puerto Rico. Who will you be targeting in 2018? Well, we're going to be working on that. Right now, we're going to do an evaluation of uh, all of the uh, uh, congressmen and congresswomen that have pledged support uh, towards the people of Puerto Rico. And in the time to take action, they have uh, reneged on that word. So uh, there is still time uh, to work. Uh, we want to do this, of course, in a non-political fashion. But we have to recognize that... Uh, our voice, you know, we're second-class citizens. We don't have representation, uh, but we do have 5.3 million Puerto Ricans in the United States, and we want to organize them to make sure that our voice is heard. Part of your concern is that companies currently operating in Puerto Rico are going to move back to the U.S. because of um, a tax loophole that was closed or a tax um, oddity that was closed for Puerto Rico. Marco Rubio says that's not the case. He's taking issue with your remarks, and you guys have been in a bit of a Twitter spat. Uh, are you planning on, on targeting Marco Rubio? No, uh, you know, what I said is I was disappointed with uh, Senator Rubio's uh, action with this vote. He understood the situation in Puerto Rico, and uh, it very clearly hurts uh, the people of Puerto Rico. Let me just put it into context. Uh, Puerto Rico is part of the United States, yet it is being considered as a foreign country in this, in this tax reform. Therefore, uh, the uh, tax that's being added uh, to other foreign countries, uh, the intangible tax, the base erosion tax, is going to be added to Puerto Rico. So. You're going to have a new tax that you didn't have before. Of course, it's going to uh, hurt and hamper our uh, capacity to grow, and it's going to limit uh, keeping some of those stakeholders in Puerto Rico. What about Congressman Curbelo targeting him? Right now, we're, uh, we're working. Some of them have said that they're going to target other vehicles. We're going to see that. Um, of course, we're going to be very vigilant uh, about the actions. Uh, we're hopeful uh, that there are other vehicles where they can uh, fix what was done. Uh, and again, this is not something that comes out of the blue. Uh, for the last year, Congress has had a policy. Leadership in Congress has had a policy in Puerto Rico, which is uh, to establish a, an oversight board to help uh, grow the economy and to uh, sustain uh, our, our fiscal situation in Puerto Rico. Uh, they established what was a roadmap saying that in future tax reform negotiations, uh, Puerto Rico had to be considered because it was always sidelined. Uh, they established that jobs created in Puerto Rico are jobs created in the United States and that based on the situation, fiscal situation in Puerto Rico, other incentives should have been, should be given. Now this was before the discussion uh, in tax reform and all of those three points were complete, completely neglected. Uh, when this uh, process ensued. So uh, we're hopeful that there's going to be some changes. Uh, we're looking forward to the uh, uh, supplemental. Maybe some of that can get fixed there. But certainly there needs to be uh, some action. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to get organized, uh, and we're going to have a, a, a group of people, uh, Puerto Ricans, uh, Latinos, and just American citizens that are tired of seeing other citizens being treated as second-class uh, citizens, uh, making their way, uh, making their voices heard, and making changes. Here in Congress. Do you think it's time for um, Puerto Rico to have congressional representation? Of course. Of course it is. If there was one time in our history where we can see what it means to be a colonial territory versus what it means to be a state, uh, right now is that time. Uh, we've been working on this for the past four months, saying how devastating this uh, tax reform would be on Puerto Rico if we are treated as a foreign uh, foreign country. Many of the uh, congressmen uh, and senators have heard it, yet uh, nothing was done about it. The main reason? We don't have political power in Congress. We don't have equal treatment in federal programs. And until we show uh, that we can uh, muster some muscle in some other jurisdictions or until, you know, the United States call upon what I think it's a moral imperative to finalize a, a colonialism in the 21st century, uh, transition out of that and make Puerto Rico a state which has been favored by Puerto Ricans uh, twice in the past five years, uh, then we will be with this uh, lingering dilemma. Governor, you embraced the president um, in his uh, immediate reaction to the disaster in Puerto Rico. Um, are you regretting the way that um, you interacted with him uh, today? 
No, no, I, I do not. I, as governor, uh, my job is uh, to call strikes when I see them and to call balls when, when I see them as well. Uh, and the president, as I stated and I reiterate, uh, was very uh, responsive to all of our petitions uh, in the onset. And uh, as I stated, uh, you know, he was responsive, but there was a lot to do still. And there is still a lot to do in Puerto Rico. Is he still responsive? Uh, I'm sorry? Is he still responsive? Yep, we'll be working with the White House on, on some of the things, but certainly a lot more has to be done in Puerto Rico. These decisions in Congress are going to be critical. They define our economic baseline towards the future with the tax reform. They define how many resources we get to rebuild a new uh, and better Puerto Rico so that it's resilient uh, to these uh, sorts of, uh, of storms. And of course, the, uh, the speed and the urgency of the recovery is also critical because as days go by and we don't get materials uh, uh, to rebuild our energy grid, for example. Uh, it is a, a, an additional day where our economy stumbles and where we don't have the opportunity to rebuild effectively. Governor Ricardo Roseo, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.